Hello students. So, up until uh, last lecture, uh, we looked into um, an, an inequality of this type where we had uh, the lower bound um, of a function f defined uh, on a closed interval a comma b is less or equal to the lower bound uh, um, on all the sub intervals uh, which is less than or equal to of course the upper bound uh, of the function f on all the sub intervals um, which is less than or equal to the upper bound of the function f on the whole interval a comma b. Um, let us name this, uh, this relation. Uh, So, let us call this relation as equation 1. Now, uh, we define the upper sum. Now, we define we define the upper sum upper sum of the function f um, corresponding to corresponding to the partition to the partition p to the partition p as uh, we write u p f which is equal to uh, capital m1 times x1 minus x0 plus capital m2 times x2 minus x1 uh, dot 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 up to capital m n times x n minus x n minus 1. So, you can write it as in the form of summation r running from 1 to n capital M r x r minus x r minus 1. So, this is our upper sum. Similarly, we can define our lower sum. So, similarly, we can define our lower sum by similarly, uh, similarly the lower sum is given by LPF and uh, you may have guessed it, it will be given by M1 times X1 minus X0, M2 times small m2 of course, X2 minus X1 dot dot up to Mn times Xn minus Xn minus 1. We can use the summation concept and then it can be written as R running from 1 to N small m r times x r minus x r minus 1. So, these two are basically uh, called as the upper sum and the lower sum. Now, um, each partition, so you see that each partition p, each partition p um, belongs to this uh, curly p a b determines these two numbers. So, determines these two numbers u p f and l p f is not it. So, for every partition p we will be able to get um, these um, uh, points x0, x1, x2, x3 up to xn and uh, based on those uh, points we can be able to obtain our sub intervals x0 to x1, x1 to x2 and so on and on each one of these sub intervals we can be able to find our lower bound for the function f and the upper bound for the, fun fun for the function f mainly because the function f is bounded on a comma b and uh, based on that uh, upper bound and lower bound on all of those sub intervals, we can be able to calculate the upper sum which is given by m1 time m1 times x1 minus x0 dot dot up to mn uh, times xn minus xn minus 1 and uh, we can be able to calculate our lower sum which is given by small m1 times x1 minus x0 plus uh, m2 times x2 minus x1 dot dot and so on. So, each partition and this uh, in this family of partitions will determine these two numbers so UPF and LPF. You can see that they are basically numbers because upper bound and lower bound are numbers and uh, x1, x2, x3 are points on a uh, real line. So, basically their difference is also a number. So, ultimately we are obtaining two numbers with the help of this partition P. 
all right so now what we have is let's go to a new page so now what we have is from inequality 1 so from inequality 1 where is that let's go back to the previous slides okay um, so in this slide from inequality 1 we have small m less or equal to mr less or equal to capital mr less or equal to m so we will write that inequality so small m less or equal to mr less or equal to capital mr less or equal to capital m and uh, we will multiply this whole inter uh, whole inequality by xr times xr minus xr minus 1 let us multiply So, as I was saying that xr and xr minus 1 they are both uh, points on real lines. So, their difference is also um, a real number basically. Now, uh, even if you have uh, a negative interval that means minus 1 to minus 2 and if you divide it into equal sub intervals uh, you will still get this difference as a positive. So, xr minus xr minus 1 is always a positive number and that is why when you multiplied the inequality when you multiplied this inequality here. Uh, this inequality the inequality sign did not change all right. So, next we will take the summation on both sides. So, this is true for every r running from 1 to n. So, if I take summation on both sides. So, this will be summation r running from 1 to n m into x r minus x r minus 1 summation r running from 1 to n small m r times x r minus x r minus 1 which is less or equal to summation r running from 1 to n capital m r times x r minus x r minus 1 which is less or equal to some r running from 1 to n capital m times x r minus x r minus 1. So, here in this sum on the left hand side here in this sum uh, small m is independent of r basically because uh, small m is the lower bound on the whole interval a b. So, it is um, it's not relevant to each one of those sub intervals. So, you can take that m out of the sub interval and then it will be basically some r running from 1 to n uh, x r minus x r minus 1 which is less or equal to some r running from 1 to n is small m r x r minus x r minus 1 which is less or equal to some r running from 1 to n capital m r times x r minus x r minus 1 which is less or equal to some r running from 1 to n x r minus x r minus 1 and here also we take capital M out of the interval because capital M is also independent of uh, uh, r. Now, here what we are basically doing we are basically uh, summing the difference of all the all the sub intervals. So, that means we are subtracting x 0 uh, uh, we are subtracting x 1 minus x 0 plus uh, x 1 minus uh, um, uh, so plus uh, x 1 minus uh, x 2 plus uh, x 2 minus x 3. So, if we if we expand this summation then you will be able to notice that um, except x n minus x 0 all other points cancels out. So, if you expand the summation you will be able to see that and ultimately we will be left with x n minus x 0. Similarly, here this term this term is defined as the lower sum LPF if we look into the previous slide. So, here so LPF LPF is defined by this sum here. So, we can write it as LPF and uh, this sum is defined as upf so upf and uh, here it is basically capital m times again xn minus x0 and uh, this xn minus x0 we know that uh, xn is our point b and a0 is our point a is less or equal to lpf is less or equal to upf which is less or equal to capital M 
times b minus a. So here what we have is basically uh, an inequality which is also important. So this inequality says that your lower sum and your upper sum uh, will be bounded by uh, small m times b minus a. So basically the lower, uh, lower bound of the function f on the closed interval a b times uh, the the difference of the endpoints basically and uh, the upper bound is capital M times B minus A which means that the upper bound of the function F times uh, the difference of the endpoints uh, will be an upper bound for your uh, lower sum as well as the upper sum. So this is uh, the second inequality uh, which, uh, which we needed to establish before we go to the Riemann integrable functions. Now based on this. Now based on this, um, we can define two numbers. So the first number is um, so we have basically so here we have two sets of real numbers. So, one is as we said every partition P determines uh, UPF and uh, we have LPF for every partition P in that family of partition AB. So basically we have two sets of real numbers for every partition P in that uh, family of partitions and uh, the supremum of the uh, of this set LPF. So the supremum the supremum of the set The supremum of the set LPF such that P is in um, curly P of AB is called as the lower integral is called as the lower integral of F on the closed interval A comma B and it is denoted by and it is denoted by integral from a to b we put a small minus sign here just to signify that it is a lower integral uh, fx dx or you can shorten it by a to b f dx or we can even shorten it by integral from a to b simply f. So when I write integral from a to b, uh, just f, it basically means that integral from a to b, lower integral of course, fx dx. This is just uh, one of the uh, notations to save time in a way. Now, uh, now that we have the lower integral, we can also define the upper integral. Uh, for the upper integral, let's go to the next page. Okay, uh, the infimum, the infimum of the set all those UPF such that P is in curly P of AB is called as the upper integral of f on the closed interval a comma b and uh, we can write this upper integral and it is denoted by and uh, uh, it is denoted by it is denoted by integral from a to b uh, we put uh, a dash sign 
or a minus sign um, in the upper limit f x d x or we can write it as a to b f d x or to save time we can even write a to b simply f. So, based on the upper sum and lower sum we can be able to define the upper integral and the lower integral. Um, they are also sometimes called as upper uh, Riemann integral and upper uh, lower Riemann integral. Now, that uh, the definition of the upper integral and lower def uh, integral are, um, are, are given um, and we have also given the notations we can define the Riemann integrable function. So, definition uh, definition a function f or a bounded function f a bounded function f on the closed interval a b is said to be Riemann integrable Riemann uh, integrable if both lower and uh, upper integral let us follow one notation. So, I am removing this dx here. So, lower integral and upper integral exist and uh, they satisfy this relation. So, the lower integral and the upper integral has to be equal. Then such functions uh, are called as uh, Riemann integrable function and uh, the common value the common value of this to this is called the Riemann integral Riemann integral of f on this closed interval a b and uh, it is denoted by a to b f f x d x we can write it f x d x or we can shorten it like before simply by a to b f d x or a to b f. So, in order to talk about the Riemann integrability uh, you see that uh, we had to first uh, look into the concepts of partition that how you get the partition of a closed interval. Uh, then from that partition uh, we formed uh, non overlapping uh, sub intervals based on those sub intervals um, we could be able to define uh, those uh, lower bounds and upper bounds not only for the function on the whole interval but also on those uh, sub intervals and for every such partition you will get a different type of uh, non overlapping sub intervals and then you get different types of uh, lower bounds and upper bounds on one of on those uh, sub intervals. Now, once we have those uh, uh, lower bounds and upper bounds we were able to obtain the lower sum and the upper sum and based on those lower sum and upper sum we can be able to obtain this uh, lower integral and the upper integral and if those lower integral and upper integral are same then in that case we say that the function is Riemann integrable. Uh, here uh, the upper sum and the lower sum they depend heavily on uh, what kind of partition you are choosing. So, for every partition P of this uh, um, of this uh, uh, family of partitions uh, we can be able to obtain uh, this uh, upper sum and lower sum. So, these are basically two sets of uh, real numbers depending on the partition P and uh, based on those uh, two uh, real numbers uh, which is uh, lower sum and upper sum we can be able to define the lower integral and the upper integral for the function uh, f and if those lower integrals and upper integrals are same then in that case the function is said to be um, Riemann integrable 
and their common value that means when they are equal uh, then that particular value is called as the Riemann integral of the function f uh, on that closed interval a b and we use a how to say a simplified notation in a way um, integral simply simply integral from a to b f x dx. So, this is just uh, um, uh, how to say a preparation to uh, define the Riemann integral um, or Riemann integrable functions on a closed interval um, a comma b. We will uh, look into now uh, an example uh, where we will show that uh, a function is uh, Riemann integrable. Um, before uh, I proceed any further, uh, I, I have provided you a list of references we can where, where you can uh, look into um, uh, for the details, uh, the things which are which I am teaching. Um, most of the time, I, I will try to follow my own uh, lecture notes. I have uh, sort of uh, prepared my own uh, lecture notes, which uh, um, I will follow, and uh, I will also try to give you some examples uh, based on the concepts which I am teaching, and uh, hopefully that will help. So now, we will look into one example where we will show that uh, a given function is Riemann integral or uh, Riemann integrable or not. So, let us start with example 1. So, statement let a comma b be a closed and bounded interval in set of all real number r and uh, c is any arbitrary point or number in r and let f mapping from a to b to r be defined as f x equals to c for all x in a comma b then prove that f is Riemann integrable. All right. So, we will look into the solution. Before we start solving this problem, uh, we first have to um, just gather the ingredient. What do we need to show the Riemann integrability? So, we have to show that the lower integral is equal to the upper integral. Now, in order to obtain the lower integral or upper integral, we first have to obtain the lower sum and the upper sum. And uh, before we can obtain the lower sum and upper sum, we first have to find out uh, a partition for this uh, closed interval a comma b. Based on that, uh, we have to find out uh, the lower bound and the upper bound for this function f on uh, those sub intervals as well as on this closed interval a comma b. Uh, here we are a little bit in luck uh, because uh, the given function is constant. So, for the constant function, uh, it does not matter what kind of partition or what kind of points you are choosing, um, the value would remain always the same. So, that means the lower bound and the upper bound would always be same, um, not only on that closed interval, but also on those sub intervals as well. However, uh, just to um, make things uh, clear or the concept clear, we are going to solve this example. So, let us see, uh, first of all f is bounded. So, f is bounded on a comma b and uh, let us take a partition. Let us take a partition p uh, of uh, a comma b as uh, x 0 to x 1 dot dot uh, x uh, sorry um, so x 0 to x 1 x 1 to x n 
uh, where a is x0 less than x1 less than dot dot up to xn equals to b and uh, obviously the sub intervals would be x0 to x1 x1 to x2 uh, dot dot and so on up to xn minus 1 to xn and uh, let capital m be the supremum of the function fx on this closed interval a comma b and uh, small m is the infimum of the function uh, sorry uh, of the function fx on this closed interval a comma b similarly we define capital mr as the supremum of fx on xr minus 1 to xr and a small mr as the infimum of the function fx on the interval xr minus 1 to xr. Uh, by the way, if I do not write x belongs to xr minus 1 to xr, it, it, like the way I have written here, it always means that uh, um, x is in xr minus 1 to xr, where r is running from 1 to 3 dot dot up to n. So, since f is a constant function, its upper bound and the lower bound would always be same. Not only that, it will be same on that, uh, um, on that, uh, I mean, uh, on those uh, sub intervals. So, since f is a constant function, our capital M, the upper bound is basically the constant C. Our lower bound on the whole interval a, b is again C. Our upper bound on each one of those sub intervals is C and our lower bound on each one of those sub intervals is again c where r is running from 1 to 3 up to n. So, based on that um, I can calculate my upper sum u p f which is basically sum r running from 1 to n capital M r uh, x r minus x r minus 1. So, capital M r is basically c. So, c will come outside of the summation because it is independent of r and uh, here we will have x r minus x r minus 1. Now, again this is similar to what we have done we, we did earlier. So, if you expand the summation then you will basically have x n minus x 0 left. So, we will have x n minus x 0 left x n is basically our b and x0 is basically our a. Similarly, we can calculate our lower uh, sum which is r running from 1 to n small m r x r minus x r minus 1. This is c times r running from 1 to n x r minus x r minus 1. Similarly, this will also give c times x n minus x0 and therefore, we will obtain c times b minus a. All right. So, now so now let p be uh, let let us uh, so let us consider uh, let us consider the set of all partition the set p a b of all partitions of a comma b uh, then basically it follows that it follows that the set l p f where all such p is in curly p of a b and uh, the set upf and the set upf where p is in curly p of a b i mean they are both basically um, how to say the singleton set are the singleton set are the singleton set 
times b minus a because it doesn't matter what kind of partition you will choose since it is a constant function we will always obtain c times b minus a and uh, therefore therefore the least uh, the the how to say the supremum or the infimum that is uh, the least upper bound or the least uh, or the uh, how to say um, uh, the greatest lower bound uh, will be always c times b minus a. So, like we were talking about the supremum of LPF and infimum of UPF, uh, if we take for this these two uh, sets actually, it will always be. Uh, so, what what I'm trying to say is supremum of all such LPF such that p is in uh, curly p of a b will be c times b minus a and uh, infimum of all such UPF such that P is in curly A of comma B is again C times B minus A. So, that means uh, that means uh, the lower integral. So, that that is the lower integral and the upper integral are same which means which means um, integral a to b f is equals to integral a to b f is equals to c times b minus a and uh, since they have a common value which is basically uh, c times b minus a this is the Riemann integral of the function f on the closed interval a b. So, this means that this means that c times b minus a is the Riemann integral is the Riemann integral of f on a comma b where f is the constant function and it is denoted it is denoted or we can just leave it like that so so for this constant function f is equals to c uh, we were able to show that uh, this constant function is riemann integrable on the closed interval a comma b uh, for that of course we needed to calculate the upper sum and lower sum which was basically c times b minus a and uh, if we take the supremum of all such upper sum uh, uh, sorry uh, of all such lower sum and the infimum of all such upper sums for all uh, for uh, over the all um, I mean how to say set of these set of all these partitions uh, then you always get uh, it as a c times b minus a um, uh, we will always get it as c times b minus a and uh, since the lower integral and the upper integral is same this uh, common value is basically uh, the Riemann integral of this function f on this closed interval a b. Um, we will look into one more example in the next lecture and uh, we will conclude uh, today's lecture um, on this example. So, thank you for your attention.